Welcome to Herself, a space for women to have deep conversations about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential, so you can become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. After being in business for over two decades, I've learned, as you likely have too, that as you grow your business, your business grows you in unexpected, often challenging, yet miraculous ways. Here, we'll talk about how to get out of your own way so you can grow a business that's abundant and sustainable while allowing you to be a force for good in the world. I'll give you simple, actionable strategies as well as wisdom and inspiration to help you root into your wholeness, lead from your values, and work in ways that feel deeply aligned so you can bring your true self into the world through your business and in every area of your life. Here we are in the home stretch of the year, and I wanted to start by sharing a little personal post Thanksgiving check in here, post Thanksgiving here in the US. It was a sweet holiday, and my birthday also falls over that time. So, just a lot of celebration, a lot of good food. And one of the things that, that happened over this time was uh, one of my family members went into the ICU right before the holiday. So, that clouded over a lot of the experience, as you can imagine, with different levels of emotional stress and grief and logistical stress, but it's all life, right? And then I just came out of my first two days of recording my audiobook for my new book, Handbook for the Heartbroken, which comes out next May. I have two more days to go next week. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying just bringing my full self into the reading of it. I didn't get a chance to record my first two books. I have a new publisher, Sounds True, and one of their their main things is, is audio. So I'm really grateful to have the chance to do that with them. I was also warned that it would be exhausting to do this. And I was warned that, you know, to not schedule anything else on those days and just to be prepared to be tired at the end of the day. And that was definitely true. The first, the first day afterwards, I was in bed at 6.30 and I, I went to sleep shortly after that. And the second night, which was last night, I went to sleep not too far after that. And today I'm still feeling quite tired. I'm wishing I'd scheduled these recording days before the weekend or had known to schedule a day off after. Live and learn next time but I'm taking it as easy as possible today. And just ongoingly, again, as we we enter into these final weeks of the year and here in the world of my business, we closed down over the holidays. We closed down for a little bit over two weeks. So we're about two and a half more weeks away from that holiday close down, that holiday vacation. And in the meantime, We are busy getting a lot of things ready behind the scenes for 2024 because we have some some good things in store for you and for us all that I look forward to sharing more about with you when we when we head into the new year. And as we're all in this kind of review and visioning mode for 2024, I wanted to share with you some things that I've seen over the years with the women that I've mentored. And I've compiled them here into five common mistakes that women business owners still make at the $100,000 income level, the 100K income level. I also want to acknowledge that this might be, I think it is, the first time that I'm speaking more publicly about money and income. And I want to bring some more context to that because. This may be an aspect of myself and my life that I haven't spoken about so openly. First, I am super passionate about money, about finance, about investing. I actually spend a good portion of my time in this realm, studying it both in terms of logistical things, studying things around money mindset, healing my relationship with money and actually doing regular money practices to manage and invest my money. And I grew up in a home where my father was the breadwinner. 
And I witnessed my mom being disempowered around money, which is a dynamic that I know is very common. And seeing the way that this impacted my mom and my family, I determined at a very young age that I wanted to write a different money story for myself. And that I really wanted to be financially self sufficient, to not be dependent upon a man or anyone else for money. And in order to do that, I knew that I really needed to educate myself about finance because no one ever taught me anything about it. So it wasn't until later in life, I would say maybe even mid 30s, I don't know if it was even early 30s. It's, it's hard to remember. Maybe I started doing some stuff in my early 30s. I think I did actually. I remember meeting with my first financial advisor in my early 30s, but then it just has intensified since then. And I also want to acknowledge that this hasn't always been easy. There's a lot of stuff that comes up for us around money, especially as women. And this is an ongoing process. Like everything that I speak about here, this is lifelong practice. And with that, it's also an incredibly rewarding experience. And just to give a specific example of that is that one of the things that I celebrated on my 46th birthday last week was that this past year, I invested more money than I ever have before. So I have more money in savings, more money invested than I ever have before. And this just feels like a big milestone, a big thing to celebrate. And there were a lot of steps that I took to make that happen. And a lot of steps I take on a day-to-day basis. And the truth is for us as women here in the U.S., and I know it's similar around the world, it wasn't that long ago that we couldn't even have our own bank accounts. We couldn't get credit cards in our names. We couldn't buy our own property. And the impact of that is still being felt by us, if not necessarily, well, in some cases on the overt level, but definitely on the more subconscious level. and. The biggest struggle present for the women that I work with across the board is around money. And most of us are burying our heads in the sand around it, but a big part of our empowerment as women and our ability to be a positive influence for our families, our communities, for the world, rests in our ability to also be empowered around money. So money is not a bad thing. Money is not is not something to be excluded from the spiritual path. I really feel that money is sacred. And when it's in the right hands and yielded with positive intention, it's a very benevolent thing. And I really want to see more women who I know have these positive intentions, who are doing really important work in the world to have more money, to be able to better take care of themselves and to be able to be a more positive influence to those around them, sharing their values in a more overt way. We need money, obviously, to take care of ourselves and in some cases our families to meet our needs so that we can then show up and serve in the ways that we all want to. And we want to balance the equation of all the energy we're putting out into the world because I know that if you're listening to this, you you give a lot of yourself and we want to be receiving that amount, ideally more of our own energy back through the form of money. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to download my free guide, five money mistakes not to make in 2024. So you can earn and save more in the year ahead. This goes into this topic of money more in depth, and it lists out some of the practices and mindset pieces and strategies that I put in place to, like I said, invest more money in the past year than I ever have before. And you can find all of this at programs-saravonstover.com forward slash money guide. That's programs-saravonstover.com forward slash money guide. And you can also find that link in the show notes. Okay, so let's move on to today's topic, which again is five common mistakes women business owners still make at the 100K income level. It's a very common goal 
to want to reach the $100,000 annual income level in your business. It's a very noble goal. I definitely used to have that. And it was very exciting when I reached it. I think the first time I reached it was in 2012 and then have since then surpassed it. It it was an empowering experience. And I think statistics say that 80% of women business owners are below the 100K income level. So I would love to see that number really shift and to see more women get above that level. But still, when you get to that level, there are likely things that you're doing that are keeping you from growing beyond that or that are keeping you from having more ease and spaciousness even at that level. And if you're not at that income level yet, these things, these mistakes that I'm going to name likely apply to you too. So in the spirit of empowering women to earn more and save more through the expert services that we're sharing with others so that we can take good care of ourselves and the people around us and really be a force for good in the world. Let's dive into these. Mistake number one that I see is that you don't have time to work on your business because you're so, bur- you're so busy working in your business. So likely you are in some sort of service-based work, yoga classes, one-on-one sessions, maybe a lot of different things pieced together, maybe courses, maybe you sell physical products, maybe retreats, workshops, and your calendar is filled with really delivering services or working in your business. So much so that you hardly even have time to maybe do basic admin tasks like billing or bookkeeping or the money practices that I shared at the start of this episode, much less any sort of marketing planning or strategic planning. You're so busy doing, 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 working in your business, and likely you are pretty tired. You probably also don't feel like you have enough time for yourself for your self-care, for your exercise, for your own spiritual practice, for rest. And you're probably feeling like you're not spending as much time or quality time with your loved ones as you'd like. So we can reach this point and we can see that maybe what was once working is no longer working that well for you anymore. And when we realize this, it's time to pivot and restructure your relationship with your work, as well as with your actual day-to-day schedule, so that you can start to carve out ample time to work on your business, as well as in your business. So working on your business looks like doing regular strategic planning, like setting aside time to even figure out when you're going to work on your business. And doing strategic reviews of your most important business metrics, whatever you've defined those to be, to keep assessing what's working and what's not working, to make shifts and pivots as needed according to that, so that you are really, really not only taking action according to intuition, but also according to real life data. You don't have time to really assess what you're enjoying in your work, what you're not enjoying, to rearrange things accordingly. And you're also not able to really explore which income streams are working, which aren't working. And again, which ones you're enjoying, which ones you're not. And when we start to have more of this time and space to work on our business, we can begin to apply the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule to your business, which says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions. And we need time and space to really pause and see how that applies to what we're doing. We also need this time out to map out marketing and sales strategies, your annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and even daily goals, and the roadmaps are going to get you there. 
as well as time to connect energetically with your own soul, or your highest self, the highest self or the soul of your business, the essence of your offerings, your internal family or your parts to make sure that the direction that you're moving in is truly aligned with what you're here to do and that you're not working against yourself, but that all of your parts, all of your being is really moving in alignment with whatever that roadmap is that you have set out to follow. The next mistake that is very common is that your business model is too complex. To grow behind, to grow beyond the 100K level to maybe 250K or even beyond that, if that's something that you aspire to, it's important to simplify your business model. You've likely been piecing together a lot of things to get to or to try to reach the 100K level. But to do that, you're needing to work pretty hard to sustain that. And you're wearing a lot of different hats. You may be serving all different kinds of people in many different kinds of ways. But to grow beyond 100K, it's important to really get clear on your business model. With that, it's good to have one, maybe two signature offers, which can include a group course, group coaching, also one-on-one work of some sort, and to really create an ecosystem of interrelated offerings with a clear flow for people to move from one to the other to get their desired results during their time with you. The more offerings you have, the more complicated things become, both at the front end and at the back end of your business. So for each offering that you have, you need a marketing process, a sales process, and a delivery process. So there are three processes, three systems that you need for each offering that you have. And each of these three things needs to be really refined and optimized over time. So if you have two signature offers, then you can see that you have six core processes that you're needing to execute and refine. And so you can begin to see that if you get above to two core offers, things are going to start to get pretty complex pretty quickly. And that is exhausting. It opens up more room for error and mistakes, and it really prevents you from honing in on and really refining over time just one or two core things to focus your energy on. So at this point, you're really going to want to streamline and simplify your suite of offers. The third mistake is that you may be applying cookie cutter strategies. Maybe you've taken a lot of online courses. You know all the things you should be doing or that are, quote, best practices, but you haven't really figured out how to apply those to your unique offers, your vision of success in this season of your life, your current values and priorities, the soul of your business and the stage of business that you're in. And you don't have a bespoke strategy to help you to do what you're here to do during this particular season of life. And this is the difference between just buying a trendy wedding dress off the rack and having one that's really customized and tailored to fit your body as it is right now, to fit your tastes, to fit your budget. So we want to have a custom fit business plan as well, where we move away from just taking online courses to teach us what to do and really start to get a personalized roadmap that speaks to all dimensions of us and all dimensions of our lives. For instance, you could be a season, you could be in a season of life where you're in transition. Maybe you're in early motherhood. And it's important for you to have quality time to spend with your child. You could be post-menopause, and this is really kind of the last act of your life. And you're wanting to really create an offering 
to share your elder wisdom with others in a way that also allows you to have space and time to do the other things that you're wanting to be doing during this season of your life. You could be in the midst of a divorce and you are really needing a lot of personal space to do self-care, to grieve, to manage the logistics of that transition and upheaval. So it's important to be able to fine tune your strategy so it can support you during whatever season of life you're in. And if you have health challenges, if you are an introvert, if you are a highly sensitive person like I am, or like I know many of you are, you want to have a business plan that allows you to feel like your business is supporting you rather than that your business is running you, or even that your business might even feel like it's sometimes traumatizing you. And to do this, you really need to find the right person or people to partner with who speak your language, who deeply get what you're doing, where you're coming from, and can support you in creating a bespoke strategy to get from where you are to where you want to be And to do that in the way that feels good to you, where you're not overriding your body, you're not overriding your intuition, and you're not buying in to the false narrative that you need to hustle and push more to get different results. And, you know, you might be staying at the 100K income level that might be something that you want to choose to do rather than growing your income. I know that not everyone wants to grow their income, but maybe you want to stay at that level and not be working as hard as you're working. You might want to be able to take a month or two off to work part-time to have a couple of days a week when you're working completely on and not in your business again, or maybe you want to get support to scale up to 250 K or more without needing to work harder because actually you can't scale and grow by just cranking it cranking it out and doing what you've been doing to get to 100k. The fourth mistake is that you are underestimating the power of right alignment. Maybe you're not believing in the power of alignment and you're buying into the larger cultural narrative that the only way to be financially successful is to do things that are a little bit or a lot out of alignment, or that to be successful, you need to play some sort of game or play some sort of a role, but that you can't be in alignment or you can't be financially successful by being in deep alignment and living in your deep truth, which I believe is very possible. Like I shared in the previous mistake, it's important to get support from those who speak your same language and are on the same page as you. And when exploring whether or not to work with someone, you really want to look at the business that they've created and the life that they're living and ask yourself, is that the kind of business and life that I'd like? Do, does this person share my values? Do they understand that business is part of the spiritual path? And can they support you with the deeper underworkings of creation and business growth, of the inner work that needs to go along with it? We we can only grow ourselves, or rather, we can only grow our businesses when we're growing ourselves simultaneously. So are we just looking at the nuts and bolts, or are we looking at the bigger picture? I've made the expensive mistake before of hiring coaches or team members who weren't in energetic alignment with me and my business and what I was creating and offering. And that didn't work out well. Again, it was an expensive mistake. And maybe I was just looking at more of those nuts and bolts of, oh, this person, you know, knows all the business things or they have all the credentials, but they didn't have all those other pieces. They didn't, they didn't have that kind of shared value system that deep experience of being on the spiritual path, of doing our inner work, of tending to all these dimensions of ourselves, of seeing our businesses as part of our lives and wanting to have an integrated life and not an imbalanced life. And 
as a result, as a result of that, I've learned to only invest in and to work with people who truly get this process of creating from the inside out. And honestly, I've found that it's there's not that many people who really do. There's not that many people who really walk this talk in a deep way. Because without this deeper alignment, if you are someone of depth, all these strategies and tactics, they're not going to work because they're not aligned with you. They're not aligned with your depths. And it's like, then you're simply pulling levers at the surface without having them being connected to something below the surface, to some deeper processes below the surface. Whereas when alignment is there, connecting the day-to-day actions you're taking, like your social media strategy, your marketing and editorial calendar, even your backend systems, technology and operations, when those are connected with who you truly are and what you are uniquely suited to do, that's when the real power and the real magic start to step in and do the work with you. So it's not just you trying to make things happen and then feeling exhausted all the time because maybe you're not getting the results that you want or you're just working harder than you want to be working. But then there are bigger forces at play that can be supporting you. The next mistake is that you think that you are your business. This is the fifth mistake. You think that you are your business. So news, you are not your business. But you are in a sacred and sovereign relationship with it. And your business is one of the most intimate relationships that you will ever be in, that you'll ever have. But so often we are enmeshed with it. And it's important to learn to parse out who you are and who and what your business is and to really feel your distinct soul and the distinct soul of your business. And from there, to come into regular conversation and connection with it, to learn to partner with it, to learn to ask it for support, ask it to rally the resources and the allies needed to help you to bring a certain product or offering into the world or to navigate a certain challenge that you're facing or to figure out a revenue pathway to help you meet your income goal or just whatever you're facing. And this partnership can also help you to find the right people to support you and the right strategies to engage in so that you're not spending so much time spinning your wheels or maybe doing things that are not really alignment with you that maybe it looks good on the surface. You think it's something that you should do and it's worth for other people. But again, if you're listening to this, you, likely you're not like most people, you you, you have a lot of depth, you have a really rich inner world, and all of that needs to be included and taken into account, deep account, really serious account on your business path. And again, that's, that's when things are really going to start to move and happen for you. Then the right clients can come and start to come in, the right doors can start to open. You start to feel the sense of inner guidance and inner momentum carrying you. So this also goes back to mistake number one, because when you create more time to work on your business, again, that doesn't just involve strategic planning. It also involves taking time to do these inner energetic, more soul level interactions or practices to connect with your highest self with the highest self of your business and to take time to deeply listen to what's needed at any point in time. Because again, the guidance is only really going to come from you. No one outside of you can tell you what you're supposed to do or how you're supposed to do it. Your inner guidance is the only thing that can tell you that because it's your inner guidance is the only thing in the universe that knows how to unfurl your greatest potential. That's not something that you can get from a cookie cutter business strategy or from a cookie cutter business accelerator. It's going to come from within you. And it's helpful then to partner with people who can help you to 
really drop into that, to trust it, to parse it out. And then to really translate that into something actionable and practical. So let's review each of these. The first mistake is that you don't have time to work on your business because you're so busy always working in your business. The second mistake is that your business model is too complex. The third is that you're applying cookie cutter strategies when you are not at all a cookie cutter person. Just be clear about that about ourselves. Four, you're underestimating the power of right alignment. Five, you think that you are your business. The best way I've found to reach new income levels, and again, the reason why I'm really highlighting income levels is because they are really kind of tangible things that we can look at that also include a whole host of other things. And I know that when I reach new income levels, it means that I am breaking through or moving through limitations within myself. I know that the depth and breadth of my work is also shifting and expanding. And so I know that as my income grows, important, important aspects of myself and my own creative life are growing as well. That the best way to do this is to get personalized support from someone who really gets what you're about and what you're up to. Now, if you'd like this kind of bespoke support in reversing these mistakes and charting out a clear roadmap for 2024 that will help you to get to the income level that you want to be at in the way that you want to get to that income level or to get to wherever you want to be, I have a couple of spaces open for herself strategy intensives. These are half day or three hour retreat like gatherings with me, just one on one, you and me, soul to soul, happens virtually. And we start at this, this deep level. And from there, we start to vision and strategize and then systemize and scale your unique inner guidance and gifts for the year ahead. And specifically over the next three months, because I found that it works best to create a vision for the year, to map out the year, but then to really, really map out the next quarter in a detailed and fine tuned way. Because life happens and we usually things are going to shift and change after about three or four months, but three months we can get a really, really clear, detailed plan in place so that you can really start to put the rubber to the road, working smarter, not harder, in getting to wherever you want to be, both in yourself and in your business and in your life in the next quarter and the next year. Because it really helps to know the exact steps we need to take each day, week, and month to create what we want to create, whether that's a course, a retreat, a workshop, podcast, or a book. And we want to put the right marketing, sales, and delivery systems in place to execute that with more skill and ease, and also to map out your income and profit flow during that time so that you can have less peaks and valleys, more consistency, more consistency. And doing something like this helps you to distill all the things you could be doing, all the things maybe you think that you're supposed to be doing. And really get clear on what is yours to do right now. Again, I have a couple of spaces available for this, and you can learn more at programs sarahavonstover.com forward slash intensive. That's programs sarahavonstover.com forward slash intensive. Now, these aren't for everyone. This is for you if you want a really intimate, personalized, really targeted experience for you, your soul, and your business. And then if you're ready to really roll up your sleeves and do the work to implement it. And I can say this process that I'm going to be leading you through is a process that I continue to lead myself through. And it yields really, really beautiful results, not only in the external world, 
but also within yourself, because as we're creating the business, the businesses of our dreams, we also want to be creating the lives of our dreams and to become really the best versions of ourselves. So you can also find that link in the show notes. But above all, I really want to encourage you to let your business be integrated into the rest of your life. Let it be a part of your spiritual practice, your self-care, your family life. Let it be an extension of all of these things. And most importantly, an extension into the world from your deepest, truest self. And to take time to give this important dimension of your life, your business, the love and care that it needs, just as you would a pet, a child, a garden, to also help it become what it's truly meant to be. Like everything else, this takes presence, attunement, and right energetic alignment. So if a herself strategy intensive is right for you, I look forward to taking a smart, strategic, and self-led and soulful dive into the world of your business together. And above all, here's to creating more brilliance, more blessings, and definitely more miracles in our lives and in the world in the season ahead. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, change doesn't come from listening alone. I invite you to commit to taking one small or large courageous action after today's conversation. One step you can take if you haven't already is to sign up for my free mini course, Three Lies Holding Successful Women Back That Keep You Overwhelmed, Stuck, and Doubting Yourself, and How to Break Free So You Can Embody Your Potential Starting Now. You can find that over at my website, sarahavonstover.com. That's my full name, sarahavonstover.com. And if you found this podcast valuable, please share it with the women in your world. Also, I'd be very grateful if you leave a review. It helps others find resources like this. And I'd love to hear what's coming alive for you after listening today. Above all, keep going and never forget the unique offerings you and your true self bring to the world. Until next time, I'm sending you my heartfelt support.